I'm the Hornet King, and I remove incredible and insane wasp nests. Whether their nests are underground, in a house, in a tree, or even down a well, I'm the person crazy enough to extract them, and I do so with my trusty vacuum. In this video, I'll be removing a massive yellow jacket colony that decided to make its nest above a client's kitchen ceiling and feeding it to my animals. Check it out. Hey everyone, welcome to the Hornet King channel. So this was a German yellow jacket or Vespula Germanica colony that decided to make its nest above this client's kitchen ceiling. So as with all of my removal processes, I have to put my ear to the wall or the ceiling or wherever the nest may be inside of these cavity spaces and listen for the buzzing, the chewing, the rumbling, whatever. There's several different noises that yellow jackets make and my ears are the best way to locate these colonies. So once I located the nest, which I kind of knew where it was anyway, because the drywall was kind of soft up there, I decided to use my keyhole saw to start cutting open the drywall to expose the nest. Now I really didn't even need my drywall saw because this drywall was pretty compromised and I probably could just take in a razor blade and just cut that wide open. The drywall is pretty crumbly and that's usually what happens is that at, over time the wasps start to put off their excrement and the drywall really absorbs that fluid and that moisture and it starts to deteriorate the drywall anyway and then as the nest gets larger they start chewing away the drywall to expand their nest space. So this is actually a multi-season nest, which means that there were two separate colonies in this cavity at one point. So this nest here was the original nest. So this was a, a year prior, and there were probably another German yellow jacket colony inside of this cavity space. And then at the end of that season, one of the queens hunkered down inside this cavity space and decided to make a nest in the same spot the following year, which is this particular colony that I'm working on now. So you can see that the envelope is kind of deteriorated, crumbly, and that's how I knew that it was an older nest. So just taking my trusty vacuum and vacuuming up as much of the envelope, which is the paper of the nest, vacuuming up as much of that as I can to expose the comb. So here's the comb of the nest. And this species, which is German yellow jacket or Vespula germanica, makes some of the larger nests that I tend to deal with here in Pennsylvania. So the messiest part about this job is just pulling all the envelope out of the space and whatever insulation that's in there, all the drywall dust, all that stuff. I have to pull that out. A lot of that falls on the floor. So I have to clean up after I'm done, of course. But once I finally get into the actual comb layer, then it's just a matter of vacuuming up whatever the adults that are inside of the space, just vacuum them off the comb and then pull the comb out and put it in my Rubbermaid bin. It's always pretty satisfying when I'm using my vacuum. Anytime you have like a, a nest inside of a cavity space, it's always fun just to vacuum up all the envelope that's occupying that massive space and just clearing out that whole space and exposing the comb. There's probably about seven or eight different actual comb layers, including the queen cells. So this will probably produce about 200 to 300 individual queens. So taking my time to vacuum up as many of the adults off the comb as possible, it avoids having to deal with a bunch of swarming flying around inside of the living space. But as you can see here, there's quite a few still bedded down in between the different comb layers. So I try not to disturb the comb all too much so that way they can stay secure inside of that comb and then I can put the whole thing into the Rubbermaid bin so that and I really don't have to worry about too many flying away. However, there were still a couple hundred that I had to vacuum off of the windows inside of the living space and just spend a few minutes in there to make sure that I got all of the flying adults. So 
But I gotta be gentle here because the comb will start to fall apart under its own weight since there's a lot of larva inside. The comb kind of gets a little bit delicate. So I have to pull it all down by supporting it on my palm and slowly pull it out of that hole. So that way it doesn't just fall apart all over the floor. And that is a monstrous nest. And there's a lot of adults inside. This nest probably housed about anywhere from like 2,000 to 2,500 individual wasps inside. So I'm putting it in the Rubbermaid bin that I have here sitting on the counter. And then going back up into the cavity space and vacuuming up all the rest of the adults. Now there is obviously an outside exit to the back of the house. So I have to vacuum up as many of the adults off of here and then have the client caulk from the outside where the entranceway is behind the siding so they don't continually have wasp nests being built in these cavity spaces. Once I get these nests home, I just take a few minutes just to vacuum up the rest of the adults that are in between the comb layers that are just crawling around on the comb themselves, and that way they don't sting my animals when I feed these comb to them. That's right, girlfriend. You take it your own. You get your own. Didn't you're so mean to everybody? Any of this turkey? Oh, 
Pigeon, you're so mean to everybody. You're more of a bully than Ginger is. Hey, Ginger. Hey, Emily. Hey, Miss Emily. Hey, George Squirrely Squirrel. Hey, Emily. It's about night time for a Squirrely Squirrel. Is it bedtime, Squirrely Squirrel? Look at your nipples, Squirrely Squirrel. You got big nipples over there, Squirrely Squirrel. Oh, Squirrely Squirrel. Oh, Mama Squirrel. Oh, is that where you hide your other peanuts, Squirrely Squirrel? Do you hide your other peanuts over there, Squirrely Squirrel? Come on, Squirrely Squirrel. Oh, look at those nipples, Squirrely Squirrel. You got babies on those nipples, Squirrely Squirrel. I hope you have enough nipples, Squirrely Squirrel. Just me feeding my hornets. Got a mixture of some uh, <clears throat> maple syrup. Makes a little bit of Fiji, of course. Let's get these girls something to drink. Here, girlfriend. You know what's coming. You want some? There you go. Right, put it up here. Here, look. Here, look. Look. All right, you want some more? That's feeding queens some food. You girls want some more? And this isn't just for shots, this is where they live. <laughs> She got some energy now, she's gonna try to fly. They do fly around the room sometimes, but uh, I just put them right back on the comb. And this is even their hive. This is some comb from um, the huge nest removal that I did. So they go down underneath, they hang down, they do their uh, excrement down there. And then they come back up here and they play around the cells. Oh, look, she found the stuff I put up top there. Slurp it up, girlfriend. They got a little bit sticky from uh, some of the syrup that I had. There you go. So that's me feeding my hornets. <laughs> Let's see if we can give this hornet... Hornet Queen, a little bit of maple syrup. Regular maple syrup. Let's see if she enjoys this. <clears throat> Thank you.
Let me get a fill, fill needle on here. She's drinking. Let's get you up close here. I can give you something to drink, girlfriend. Oh, no, come over here.